tremendous noise explosion in Shanghai and the truth behind the silence of CCP. Forty-four thousand shops fallen. Low-price coffee battle in China sparks wave of closures. Alibaba laid off 20,000 employees last year, former execs now deliver gigs. Shocking revelation inside the Chinese economy, GDP growth is only 0 to 1%. Tremendous noise explosion in Shanghai and the truth behind the silence of CCP. At 7.24 p.m. on January 29, a deafening roar shattered the serenity of Shanghai's Songjiang district, piercing the night sky with a blinding flash. From the tranquil confines of their homes, startled residents were abruptly jolted into a state of panic as they witnessed the windows quivering, homes swaying, and parked vehicles jolting violently on the streets below. It was a moment of sheer chaos, a surreal symphony of disarray that seemed to defy the very fabric of reality. As the echoes of the cataclysmic event reverberated across the district, the digital realm ignited with a fervor of speculation, swiftly seizing the attention of audiences nationwide. Like wildfire, whispers spread across social media, casting a damning shadow of suspicion over land space, an entity now synonymous with a large-scale experiment gone disastrously awry. In the murky depths of the online domain, reports began to surface, revealing the grim toll exacted upon three individuals whose identities remained shrouded in mystery, their fates precariously hanging in the balance. However, amidst the clamor and chaos, the Songjiang District Emergency Management Bureau boldly stood in defiance, adamantly refuting any notion of an explosion. With a dismissive attitude, they offered naught but a vague promise of forthcoming clarification, a feeble attempt to assuage the mounting tide of uncertainty. Yet, as the dust settled and the clamor subsided, their hollow assurances crumbled beneath the weight of unrelenting scrutiny, leaving naught but a void of unanswered questions and lingering doubts in their wake. The silence emanating from official channels only served to deepen the intrigue, fueling the insatiable hunger for elusive truths amidst a tempest of rampant speculation. While some economic tabloids and semi-official outlets like Chai Sin pointed accusatory fingers at land space, the military-industrial juggernaut vehemently denied any complicity, attributing the chaotic commotion to a routine test gone tragically awry. Yet, their carefully crafted narrative wilted beneath the searing scrutiny of eyewitness accounts, the thunderous roar of the explosion transcending the confines of their feeble attempts at explanation. Amidst the swirling maelstrom of uncertainty, the pervasive veil of secrecy draped ominously over the entire ordeal, casting dark shadows of suspicion upon the very fabric of truth. Many whispered of sinister military involvement, spinning tales of a failed Chinese military missile launch as the catalyst behind the cataclysmic explosion. In the dimly lit corners of the online domain, discussions were steeped in an air of clandestine intrigue, with Shanghai netizens cautiously guarding whispered secrets like prized relics of forbidden knowledge. The sudden blackout of the internet, the erection of cordons, and the eerie silence of emergency sirens only served to fan the flames of suspicion, igniting fears of a meticulously orchestrated cover-up. And yet, amidst the chaos and confusion, whispers of an even darker truth began to emerge, tales of fireworks scattered amidst the debris and the tragic loss of Chinese military researchers. The sudden and irrevocable departure of these skilled minds, painstakingly nurtured with untold investments of time and resources, undoubtedly sent shockwaves rippling through the very fabric of the military research community. Yet, rather than confront the grim reality head-on, the authorities in Shanghai opted to bury the incident deep within the recesses of oblivion, concealing the truth beneath layers of deceit and deception, forever shrouded in the veil of secrecy. Government owes nine months' wages, employees suffer under CCP rule. Local governments in China are grappling with a financial crisis, forcing cuts to civil servants' pay. Many agencies are unable to pay salaries, and analysts foresee ongoing salary and bonus reductions becoming commonplace through 2024. 
Video footage circulating online depicts employees of the Transportation Bureau in Zhuzhou District, Tianjin, staging a protest over nine months of unpaid wages, with a considerable police presence and numerous police vehicles stationed nearby. Social media reports indicate that local governments are facing financial difficulties, with civil servant salaries in Juqing City, Shandong Province, being delayed for three months in order to cover payments before the Chinese New Year. To address funding shortages, the government has instructed civil servants to secure loans for government use, with department heads required to borrow 600,000 yuan, deputy heads 300,000 yuan, and ordinary staff 200,000 yuan, and salary payments contingent upon meeting these loan targets. Leading up to the Lunar New Year, Dong Nan Jun Chi, a real estate developer in Xi'an Shanxi, had not yet paid wages to workers leading to emotional scenes where a man seeking his salary was seen in tears and willing to kneel for it. On February 6, a group of migrant workers, denied their wages, gathered outside the Jinhai District Government Building in Tianjin, urgently seeking resolution to their issue, only to be met with attempts by security personnel to prevent them from approaching the building. Videos emerged showing construction workers protesting on a highway near the Chichu Mountain Toll Station in Zutong County, Minyang City, Sichuan, on New Year's Eve due to unpaid wages. In Waxi, reports surfaced of dozens of migrant workers seeking overdue wages from China Construction 8th Engineering Division being detained at a police station without food for an entire day. These incidents serve as indicators of severe financial strain at the local level in China. Hospitals are also facing salary delays, with Lu Shinan Hospital in Yangdu County, Shandong, owing employees eight months of wages. In response, the hospital director initiated a hunger strike to express remorse over the unpaid wages. Financial difficulties in Shangchu Hunan led to a hospital in Shuiyang District being mortgaged to a bank. Diversion of medical insurance funds for daily PCR testing during the pandemic depleted hospital resources, leading to salary disputes. The situation is compounded by the bank directly collecting payments at hospitals, making it harder to pay doctors. Additionally, some individuals cannot afford medical insurance due to increased costs, exacerbating hospital financial strains. In 2023, China's local government funds and income from land sales dropped by over 20 percent. This signals a big problem, local governments are spending more money than they're making. A financial article from last November says that for the past few years, most local governments didn't have enough money, with only a few seeing growth. Even those with some growth are just barely keeping things balanced financially. This is mainly because they rely too much on selling land and spend too much on building things like roads and bridges when the economy is slow. 44,000 shops fallen. Low price coffee battle in China sparks wave of closures. More than 44,000 coffee shops have closed down. China's low price coffee battle triggers a wave of closures. This year, a surge of entrepreneurs entered the coffee market leading to an increase in coffee shops and the beginning of a brutal shakeout. China's sluggish economy and consumer downgrade have affected the coffee industry. Major chain brands started a 9.9 yuan low-price coffee battle this year, gaining significant market share. However, independent coffee shops that focus on medium to high price ranges couldn't afford to follow suit, resulting in a wave of closures. As of October 29, 2023, 44,000 coffee shops have closed across mainland China. The casualties of this consumer downgrade induced coffee war are mainly independent coffee shops that target a price range of 20 to 30 yuan. According to 21st Century Business Herald, this year, leading chain coffee brands such as Luke King Coffee and Coffee Box kicked off a wave of 9.9 yuan coffee battles. Although these big brands saw a decline in profits, their revenue surged and they rapidly expanded their stores. Luke Kin Coffee's second quarter revenue and store count have surpassed Starbucks, making it the leading chain coffee brand in mainland China. According to Zhujiang TV, chain coffee brands offering coffee at 9.9 yuan and 8.8 yuan have taken over the market. In Hangzhou's Madukyo Road, there are both Luke Kin and numerous independent coffee shops. Some independent coffee shop owners complained, the 9.9 yuan pricing is a bit outrageous, we can't lower our prices just because they're cheaper, 
we don't have the money, selling cheaper will only lead us to continuous losses. An independent coffee shop owner limited to interface news, it's tough for me with Luke Kin and coffee box opening next to my shop. The owner mentioned that in May of this year, after Luke Kin and Coffee Box opened within 200 meters of their store, Luckin's opening directly caused their revenue to drop by 40% and Coffee Box's opening cut it in half. In response, they launched an 8.8 yuan discount coupon, but they immediately began losing money. Many entrepreneurs with similar experiences cried out, my independent coffee shop is being killed by the 9.9 yuan coffee. A Xiaohangshu blogger named Bai Yuan Li Mei stated that she opened an independent coffee shop in Tianjin in May 2022, thinking that financial professionals have a habit of drinking coffee, so she chose a location near several big banks. However, she soon found that having the habit of drinking coffee doesn't mean having the habit of paying for it. Many people were already accustomed to buying 9.9 yuan coffee from Lu Kin. While the density of coffee shops is increasing, the lifespan of new openings is getting shorter. Many new coffee shops, especially individual ones, often close within just two to three months of operation. Despite expectations, coffee shop operations are not smooth. The store has been losing money, and after three months, it announced closure and transfer. According to Dongda, the high density of coffee shops is a significant reason for their losses. Alibaba laid off 20,000 employees last year, former execs now deliver gigs. Alibaba laid off 20,000 employees last year, former execs now deliver gigs. Alibaba, the Chinese e-commerce behemoth, ruthlessly slashed its workforce by a staggering 20,000 employees in 2023, a move that adds to the mounting turmoil within the company. This morning, as Alibaba announced its fiscal third quarter earnings, it also declared a whopping $25 billion increase in its stock buyback program. The workforce at Alibaba shrunk to 219,260 individuals by the end of 2023, a significant drop from the nearly 240,000 employees it had at the close of 2022. Shockingly, Bloomberg reports that Alibaba axed a similar number of employees throughout 2022, as well. The brutal layoffs at Alibaba coincide with its efforts to offload several non-core businesses. Despite the turmoil, Alibaba managed to report earnings per share, excluding certain items, at $2.67 for the period, slightly surpassing analysts' expectations. Revenue also saw a modest 5% year-over-year increase, reaching $36.67 billion, exceeding analysts' estimates by $270 million. Amid China's economic slowdown, Alibaba's e-commerce sector is losing ground to competitors, particularly those offering cheaper alternatives like Pinduoduo by PDD Holdings. Additionally, Alibaba's cloud computing division saw only a marginal 3% year-over-year revenue increase, while EBITDA surged by 86% as Alibaba prioritized profitability. CEO Eddie Wu emphasized that Alibaba's main focus is reigniting growth in its core businesses, namely e-commerce and cloud computing. Wu pledged to inject more funds into enhancing customer experiences within the e-commerce sector. Despite these efforts, Alibaba's stock plummeted by 5% today and has remained relatively stagnant over the past month. Moreover, shares have plummeted nearly 30% over the past year, reflecting the mounting challenges and uncertainties surrounding the company's future. Shocking revelation inside the Chinese economy, GDP growth is only 0 to 1%. China's landscape is marred by the sight of homeless individuals strewn across its streets at night, long queues of jobless workers vying for scarce employment opportunities, and thousands rallying in protests demanding payment for overdue wages. Even the affluent and investors have joined the fray in recent months, protesting against encroachments on their rights. The Chinese stock market, in a staggering downturn, witnessed a historic plunge at year's end, signaling an alarming trajectory toward the imminent collapse of the CCP regime. Despite attempts by CCP leaders and state media to project confidence in China's economic prowess, economist Xu Qingang has cast a shadow of doubt over these assertions. 
Su Qinggang, a distinguished figure in economics currently affiliated with esteemed institutions such as the Center for Chinese Economics and Institutions at Stanford University and Imperial College London, forewarns of a grim reality, China's economic growth, as measured by GDP, is poised to hover between 0 and 1 percent, with a looming financial crisis on the horizon. Speaking candidly during an interview, Su questioned the reliability of the Chinese Communist Party's official announcement of a 5.2% GDP growth for 2023. Citing alarming statistics, Su pointed to a stark rise in unemployment rates, particularly among the youth, with official reports indicating levels exceeding 20% and some economist surveys suggesting rates surpassing 40%. Such stark unemployment figures are incongruent with the projected 5% economic growth. Moreover, Su highlighted declines in China's foreign trade and a slump in the real estate sector, a key pillar of the nation's GDP, casting further doubts on the credibility of the reported growth figures. Despite officials touting electric vehicles, batteries, and green energy as the new drivers of growth, Su argues that the combined value of these sectors pales in comparison to that of the real estate industry, representing only about 3% of total foreign trade. As such, he deems the official 5.2% economic growth figure unreliable. Drawing from various data sources, Su predicts that China's economic growth for 2023 is likely to hover close to zero, with the most plausible scenario slightly exceeding 0% but falling short of 1%. He attributes the economic challenges not to any single individual, but to systemic flaws within the CCP, warning of an impending large-scale crisis in the Chinese economy.